All right, everybody. Today I'm here with Tony Kelly. He is a USC Bantamweight fighter. How are you doing today? Doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. Welcome to the Daily Dose MMA Show, man. We uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Appreciate you having me. So uh, I saw you got a fight announced. Um, so you know you're. I'm assuming you're already in training camp, things like that. How are things going? How are you feeling? They're going good. You know, I've. Uh... I was actually supposed to fight a couple months back and ended up uh, messing up my shoulder. So I'll be having that, getting uh, getting ready for December now. Yeah, I was just going to ask. I mean, with the fight coming up in December, you got roughly two and a half months. Are you kind of already in a tough training camp? I know most guys like about eight weeks. You're looking at about 10 weeks. Are you kind of just taking it light and then you'll get kind of into a heavier camp? Yeah, it's kind of like one – one camp still you know because I was in camp and then I got injured and, you know so it's just like a perpetual camp but we're kind of dialing back a little bit right now you know just fine-tuning getting things in order and uh we'll be ready in December and I was just gonna ask I mean you know injuries and things like that I mean they're a common occurrence kind of when you're when you're training and things like that I mean have you do you feel like your body is pretty much healed and you you're you're all ready to go you're ready to fight Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, a good team working on me, helping me out. Great physical therapy program. I am uh, really excited to show the world Tony 3.0. And, uh, you know, obviously you're fighting on that December card. Um, you know, maybe it's rumored that another Louisiana native, Dustin Poyer, might be, you know, headlining that card. I mean, is it kind of kind of neat to see a guy, you know, in the same state you grew up in kind of headlining the card and, you know, you're kind of on the undercard. I mean, is that kind of neat to you or is it kind of just whatever you'll fight whenever? No, yeah, of course, that's cool. You want to see everybody from, you know, your state succeed, you know, kind of put us on the map, honestly. You know, there's only a, a handful of, of fighters who have come out of Louisiana and been successful. So it's pretty cool. And, um... You know, I got to ask, USC 269, I mean, great number, right? I mean, it's kind of exciting to be fighting on that card, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man. I I'm excited because uh, it's the last pay-per-view of the year, you know. Dustin Poirier, Charles Oliveira, you got Amanda Nunez on the card. Uh, so I'm, I'm just really excited to be included upon that, you know. And... You know, obviously, like I said, you're, you're about 10 weeks out. Um, you said it's kind of been like a continuous training camp, you know, throughout the whole process. I mean, are you kind of already breaking down your opponent and things like that? Or do you leave that up to your coaches and you just kind of listen to them and drill what they tell you? I mean, we all kind of sit around and think, tank, you know, and come up with strategies and watch footage and stuff. And, and we've done that. Uh, we know that he's an exciting guy. He's going to come. He's going to try to fight. He's long. He's rangy. He's got a good jab, good kicks. Um, we're really we're excited for it. You know, we're, we're preparing. You know, we don't, we don't get much on, on people's skills and stuff like that, you know. We just kind of like to see, you know, hey, this is, this is some things that they like. This is some tells, et cetera. But, man, at the end of the day, it's a fight. You know, he can show up and be anybody that night. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I was just – I was just going to ask, I mean, it's the fight game. I mean, the reason why I think everybody loves it so much is, I mean, especially MMA in particular, I mean, anything can happen, you know, is it when you're watching film and you're trying to plan for these guys, are you kind of just looking for common tendencies they do? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, essentially, you know, uh, some people, you know, uh, it, it's, it's pretty apparent when they switch stances, you know, if they're looking for something or how they're initiating takedowns, et cetera. And you just kind of try your best to plan and, 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 you know, make a blueprint. But uh, like I said, you know, anything could happen in a fight. You know, uh, I, I like to think that no fighter is the same as their last fight. You know what I mean? Like you should be ever evolving. So I never think that I'm going to get what I saw. But I could get a better version, a lesser version. Uh, but we're going to find out in December. <laughs> and I was just going to ask you, I mean, you're in a very stacked division. People argue 155, 135, which one is more stacked? And it doesn't really feel like, I mean, I know there's a champion up at 135 right now, but obviously there was uh, some controversy between, you know, uh, Peter Yan and then uh, Aljo. And so, 
you know, is it kind of, when you're looking at that division, is it kind of almost like intimidate, not maybe intimidating the right word, but like you kind of realize how steep of a hill it is to climb to get into that top 15, top 10, where obviously you want to be? Not at all. Honestly, the, the world hasn't even seen my potential yet. I know what I'm capable of. I'm not scared of any of these guys. I mean, look, man, on any given day, you know, any of these guys could be a champion, right? But they haven't stood in front of me. I haven't stood in front of them. So at the end of the day, I think everybody's on the same platform as me. You know, I, I don't buy into to, uh, the numbers and the ranking because a fight is a fight. And once I crack you in the mouth, we're going to see what happens. <laughs> and it's I think it's kind of weird for me seeing the 135 because you have all these different kind of builds of fighters like you have Sean O'Malley who's super long and lengthy and then you guys you have the guys like you know Aldo and Jan who are kind of these short stockier guys I mean you, you kind of look like you're a bigger guy for the 135 pound division two I mean obviously no weight cut is fun but you know have you kind of narrowed it down to you know things you need to cut out in your diet like maybe week eight versus week four and things like that oh yeah absolutely I mean you can make it harder or you can make it easier on yourself you know so uh, I like to try to make it easier. I haven't always, but I'm starting to like to do that now. <laughs> and I know in Louisiana, I mean, you guys got all the kinds of good food out there. I mean, is there anything in particular that you had to cut out of your diet that you just crave the entire time you're in camp? Man, a, a lot of people, you know what? You're right. Louisiana is, is awesome and it's very well known for its cuisine, but I'm uh, surprisingly... I'm uh, extremely conscious of what I eat. You know, I don't just eat anything. Uh, and that's, that's not because of fighting. That's not because I got a diet. That's just by choice. Uh, I think that there's a lot of bullshit. Like if you look at the labels nowadays, like food's not even food, you know? So I, I'm pretty conscious all the way around. So I, you know, whatever I like, it's, it's just gonna be pretty clean. Like I like a lot of fruit, you know? I like steak, I like stuff like that. Um, I don't venture off too much i don't get get crazy i don't eat like you know gumbo and etouffee and stuff every day so i'm all right <laughs> all right man well you gotta i'm sure you got a bunch of louisiana screening at you right now talking about how you're not eating the gumbo and the louisiana cuisines out there uh, yeah yeah hey, it is what it is <laughs> and uh you know, when you're coming up to fight week, obviously the nerves are running high. You're about to fight. I mean, now with the COVID thing, you're quarantined in your hotel room for a little bit. Is there anything now that you feel like, you know, on the mental aspect of fighting is even more important now because you're kind of locked up in your hotel room, you know, for those for those little bit of days instead of maybe going out and seeing the city that you're fighting in and things like that? Man, you know what? To me, I'm always just focused on the goal anyway you know, getting out and doing stuff, just like, that's a, I mean, that's just normal life. When I get to the hotel and I'm, I'm like in fight mode, like I'm just preparing for that. Like, I don't really care about what else is going on, you know, so it doesn't really bother me. And there's no part of you, like when you're in your hotel room that you're just playing the fight over and over in your head again. And, you know, you're seeing all these different outcomes that doesn't really happen to you. You're just, you're just ready to go. I mean, yeah, you know, like I, I visualize a lot, you know, so I see a bunch of different outcomes all the time, but, you know, they're never not in my favor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I was just about to say, I mean, that's kind of the mentality you have to have, right? I mean, you got to look at this, this roster from top to bottom at 135 and think you could basically beat everybody, you know, on any given day. I feel that way. I, I genuinely feel that way. I mean, obviously you gotta, you gotta fill in gaps and, and there's holes and, you know, I know, you know, people watch footage and they get so hung up on what they see in, in one fight. And I, I tend not to do that because, like I said, you know, it's ever evolving. And I like to think that I'm getting better day by day. And, uh, man, I'm excited for December because I think that I'm really going to be able to play a game of leapfrog. And I think the whole world's going to know my name after that. And I was just going to say, I mean, you bring it up that, you know, the fight game itself is, you know, always evolving. But you know, you as a fighter are also always evolving. And I was going to say, is there anything in December that you feel like you, you can put on display that maybe people haven't seen or maybe people don't give you enough recognition for? How smart I am at fucking somebody up. <laughs> I'm actually highly intelligent at it. 
Well, I was just going to say, man, that's a, that's a great response. I mean, obviously, Fight IQ is huge. And, you know, sometimes when you're in there, I mean, from an outside perspective, I don't know how you keep, you know, keep your wits about you, especially in those kind of wars that you see out there. I mean, is there any part of you that kind of like blacks out and you kind of just go back to instinct? Or do you always feel like you got a good head on your shoulders when you're in there? Uh, I mean, anybody can have an off night. I'm sure sometimes maybe I, you know, like uh, I'll go back to uh, the Kai Kamaka fight, you know, I'm dusting them up, I'm hitting them with elbows and, and, you know, clean clinch techniques. And then I'm like, oh, let me jump for a guillotine. And, I, you know, I'll pull them on top of me, you know, I just kind of, that was, that was more impulsive like that. I was kind of just, you know, reacting, uh, reacting. But uh, for the most part, you know, I, I like to think that I got my, my wits about me. And, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, dude, I, I fight. I've been fighting for a long time, you know, and I live this, man. This is this is what I do. So, I mean, you know, you're going to have to hit me with some shit I ain't seen to get me out of my element, to be honest, you know. And I've seen a lot. I mean, and I guess I was just going to say, I mean, your life has revolved around fighting for so long. I mean, obviously, you've had some unplanned time off around here. I mean, is there anything that you kind of realize that you've been able to enjoy a little bit more since you've been, you know, out of the octagon for so long? Or have you just been in that prolonged camp, like you said, and your mind has just been, when can I get back in there? You know what, man? Like, I, I'm just, <laughs> I've dabbled in a lot of different areas in my life, you know, um, Man, I, I honestly, you know, to piggyback off of being conscious and stuff like that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent in like health and, and just like di different modalities for health. And so, you know, I've, uh, I went to, to school to learn like holistic nutrition. And, you know, I didn't finish the program or anything like that, but I learned a little bit, you know, so just, just stuff like that, you know. Um, just kind of let my foot off the gas, let my, let my body heal a little bit. You know, I had a knee surgery. I had some, some injuries that I, I let heal up and kind of got distracted, but then found my way right back into the groove. And now it's time to go, man. I, I gas pedal to the floor, man. <laughs> and, uh, do you have any predictions or is it too early to start predicting your fight in December? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I'm predicting fireworks. I can't tell you what round he's going to go out, but he's going out. I promise you guys, mark my words, you heard it here first. And I hope all you keep betting against me because I'm going to make you lose so much fucking money. You watch. You watch. Hey, well, you know, as a betting man myself, I might have to take your word on it. And hey, you know what? If you make me some money, too, that's that's even better than both of us win. You know what I'm saying? And you, you get it. Uh, you get it. An exciting finish and you might get even more money from the big boss, Dana. So, hey, that's an even better Christmas present. That's what I'm coming for. I'm coming for a performance bonus, not a fight of the night performance, guys. Mark my words. You heard it here first. And are you a guy that on your off time, you're going to be watching these UFC pay-per-views and these events that they're putting on, or are you kind of just spending some time off is kind of what you need? No, man, I love the UFC. I love watching these fights. I love watching these guys, you know, I like watching people get out there and, 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 you know, represent themselves, you know? So I love this sport. <laughs> And uh, obviously you got your, your Bantamweight Championship coming up in October, and uh, I'm sure your eyes will be glued to the screen when that's playing. I mean, do you have a prediction there? You know, Aljo, he, he's the real deal, man. He's, he's very well-rounded. He's crafty. Uh, you know, I think he may get it done against Peter Yan this time, actually, like, legitimately. But uh, Peter, you know, I, I like Peter's style a little bit more, you know more stand up heavy than, than the grappling aspects, but you know, either one's a good champion, you know, whoever it is, stay there, wait for me. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to bring that up. I mean, after this title shot, I mean, there's just a, I mean, even in the top 10, there's just a list of killers up there. I mean, hopefully we will see your name up there soon. I mean, you seem like you're, you're very confident right now that you could be any of those guys in the top 10 and, I mean, is there anyone maybe in that top 10 that you would just like, you would just love to fight? Like you're just itching to kind of get at. Man, I would have to go back and look at who is actually in the top 10. I only look at that top spot to be honest, you know, but anybody can get it on any given day. I really don't care. <laughs> I love, love to do it. 
And that's a great answer, man. And I just want to say we do appreciate your time on here. If there's anything else you'd like to say to the fans, man, the floor is absolutely yours. You guys tune in. You know, December is going down. It's going to be fireworks. Last pay-per-view of the year. I'm guaranteeing a performance bonus. Bet on me. Bet against me. I don't care. Tune in. Watch it. Thanks so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Hey, man. Well, uh, hopefully after that big performance bonus knockout, we can get you back on the show and we can get to talking about it, man. Uh, best of luck to you in December, and I can't wait to watch. Let's do it. Thank you, bro. Tony Kelly, everybody. Thanks so much.